Good afternoon once again, everybody, and welcome to Archbishop Wood High School. It is Archbishop Ryan from the Philadelphia Catholic League, an upstart team, took down St. Francis, St. Patrick recently. A big time team that has every indication that, hey, they want to go to the Palestra this year and they want to win the Catholic League title. Came up a bucket short last year. They think they can do it against Radner, a team that we were talking to the freshman coach, Jonathan, prior to this. He says, guys, you have earned this opportunity, as we look at the Radner bench right now, earned the opportunity to be here today. And other than schools like Lower Marion, not many schools from the main line get these types of invites to the Moscow Classic. Alongside me is Bruce Badgley, Will Ryan on the cameras right now. Will will be up to do some commentary momentarily. Nasir Smith will be with us for the first half of this game and they will introduce now the Radner Raptors. Danny Rosenblum, number zero. Charlie Thornton introduced next at six foot four, a long senior wearing number four. Cooper Miller, the senior, number 13, a six one guard. Henry Pierce, a 6'1 guard. And then Jackson Hickey. Hickey is a big time player. A lot of people looking at him. He's gonna be a star in District 1 play this year. And now we'll be introduced to the Raiders of Archbishop Ryan. Rocco Morabito introduced first. Jaden Murray played a key role on last year's Raiders team that made it all the way to the 5A quarterfinals. Darren Williams, now a junior, a left-handed shooter and ball handler, an excellent guard in the Catholic League. Thomas Sorber, six foot nine, big wide body, excellent ball control. And then Michael Zaire Paris, he was Michael Paris last year, but now he goes by all three names. Paris, the last of the starting five, introduced for Archbishop Ryan. Should be a good game here, Bob. Um, I got to see Ryan take on uh, Emotep at LaSalle last year, so it was a really good game. I'm excited uh, to get to see some of these guys I've uh, seen in the past. Will Ryan will join us here shortly. And what a job that Will did getting that view inside the Archbishop Ryan huddle. Will, as we bring you back in here, I know you had some thoughts on why this might be your game of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Radner, we talked about distinct styles. Radner just a, plays a really, really fundamental brand of basketball. Really excited to see Jackson Hickey. I mean, earned himself obviously a Princeton commitment but with that being said this summer uh, he was putting up numbers that were just ridiculous I mean playing the likes of Bonner Devin Prep amongst others and, and he put up 30 balls at, on multiple occasions at Philly Live which is like the premier showcase for high school players uh, certainly deserves his commitment but then guys like Charlie Thornton as well I'm just really excited to see this squad underway Radner in black and Archbishop Bryan in the white with the red numerals and the yellow trim. Bob Long, Nasir Smith, Will Ryan here on the broadcast team with Bruce Badgley on the camera. Jackson Hickey, a deep three. That one's no good. Morabito couldn't get the rebound. And, and Will, did you say a commitment to Princeton? Absolutely, yeah. He's, he's committed to committed Princeton? Committed to Princeton. Wow. There's Hickey, and he gets the scoring started. Another really nice crowd here, and you'll hear these Raptor fans from our left, Michael Zaire Paris. Will, while you were on the floor, we were talking about how Joe Zaglinski said, hey, he's Michael Zaire Paris. He's a three-name guy now. That one's no good from Williams. Hickey. And a trip wasn't called. Morabito came up with it, was looking for Zaire Paris. Instead, Darren Williams rises. He couldn't hit. Good defense there and pulled down by Danny Rosenblum. Yeah, Rosenblum, a senior guard, he's not, not likely to be flustered in a game like today. Hickey drives, extra pass to the corner. Back iron no and Morabito goes up high on the Charlie Thornton miss. Fortunate for Archbishop Ryan to come back up with the basketball.
Wow, chance to take a breath. We didn't get that in the Reading versus West Catholic game. Ryan into the offensive set. Tough shot for Williams and couldn't get it to go. Brought it, down by Henry Pierce. And a nice box out by Charlie Thornton as well. He's going to be undersized against Sorber. No Jackson Gaffney to kind of match that size. Um, but yet it's still a good job to keep him off the glass there. Terrible drive. Good back cut by Jackson Hickey. Wow. The fundamentals. We talked about that earlier, you know, in the, in the warm-ups. We talked about how Radner was going to come out fundamentally sound, and then you see Hickey back door with the pass and the layup. Yeah, Henry Pierce came to the jump stop, was in a little bit of trouble, but kept the eyes up. Good chemistry, teamwork, and an early 4-0 lead for Radner. Ryan, a big game yesterday against St. Francis, beat St. Patrick's School earlier in the month. But a big 24-hour turnaround here, and Radner, an excellent program from District 1. We've seen two of them here today, Downingtown West, and now Radner, Hickey, wide open. You see those three, five guys playing beyond the three-point line. Nobody there to rebound except for the gentleman in white. And that is how you get the offense going. A back screen there by Darren Williams. Radner had no shot to defend that one. That's exactly what Joe Zaglinski wants from his team. A quick timeout on the floor. And here's that back screen. You see Williams. Nice job by Bruce Badgley, actually, to get that. Ball comes in from up top, but it's all because of the off-ball movement by Williams. Yep, and, and maybe a lack of communication from Rosenblum as well. That's not necessarily Thornton's job. Thornton has, has enough to deal with battling Sorber down low. If there's a back screen coming, Rosenblum really needs to let Thornton know so he can get around it. Maybe it's even a jump switch. Timeout on the floor, and it's a quick one. 30-second timeout. This is the Diane Mosco Foundation shootout. It is live here on Bob Long Sports. It's our second year doing every game. We've been here, you know, when the LaSalle has been involved in years past, but just to be here for all of these contests is an absolute blast and an honor. It's a wonderful cause. John Mosco's late wife, Diane Mosco, being honored here today, her foundation that they're raising funds for. You can find out a lot more on the Archbishop Wood page, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And all the donations and all the proceeds from today's event will go to that foundation. Archbishop Ryan running that zone 2 3 defense, and Jaden Murray kicked to the basketball. But Radner, give them some credit, right? That's how you beat the zone, get the ball to the middle of the zone, and cut off the ball. Jaden Murray just so long. And let's give Hickey some, some credit there too. He's just moving all around the floor, just not standing in one spot, really working the floor and getting to his spots where he can get jump shots or find his teammates for a cutting pass. Look at that. Yeah, really good pass for O'Neal. Archbishop Ryan plays such great defense. It's a big part of the reason they made the run they did last year. A sixth seed in the Philadelphia Catholic League, a lot of contact. No foul call. Sorber was the one in the area, but the whistle stays silent. Offensive foul. Rocco Morabito, certainly the feet weren't set, but good body position, and lowering that shoulder is the reason for the call. But we were talking about Archbishop Ryan, a sixth seed in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Upset Archbishop Wood to get to the Palestra. Won the game against West Catholic and got to the final where they were a shot away from beating Newman Garetti. That three is good. That's the three ball. Charlie Thornton. And Thornton again is gonna have his hands full with Sorber and what, what a, a pass. pass. Thomas Sorber has great vision for a big man. He really does. And Jaden Murray's learning to play with another big man on the floor. Uh, last year we saw it was mostly Murray as Sorber's backup. Murray converting to more of a four. It's really fun to see. It's a deep three there. Big rebound inside. Didn't go right back up with it. They'll reset. 
and poked away. Morabito is going to come up with it for Archbishop Ryan. Morabito is going to lead the break and now put it in park. Michael Zaire Paris. Zaire Paris to the rim. It's a very strong take there by Zaire Harris. Jackson Hickey, so quick off the dribble. A lot of contact, no foul call. We got a theme here, folks. They're gonna let him play tonight. Zaire Paris. And Will, when you look at Zaire Paris, he was such a key for that run last year for Archbishop Bryan. When, when they started playing well, it was a pretty strong correlation to when he really started putting up 10, 15, 20 points in games. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, and just providing excellent, excellent minutes. He was a bench piece last year, right? But he ended up playing minutes closer to a starter. Kind of David Wise would take that step back and Paris kind of took that step up. Yeah, I got to witness that last year when uh, Ryan played Emotep at LaSalle last year. So it was definitely his role. I remember seeing him play. Darren Williams and another one where he just put the shoulder down. Joe Zaglinski doesn't like the call, and you know what? Joe's right about one thing. The defender was sliding, but it's that it's that shoulder. When you put the shoulder down, that's the call you're going to make. And, and it, in my eyes, it doesn't make that big of a difference that the defender's sliding as long as he's in legal guarding position, right? I mean, the, the guy is moving, so you have to move with your, you know, the guy that you're guarding as well. He gets in front of him and gets run over. It, it, it's probably the right call, call. Into the game is Michael Savadov. Another guy I have to shout out, he's a, he's a fellow Stone Harbor Rec League player as well as Greg Phillips earlier today. <laughs> Cooper Miller. Pronounced Miller. Spelled M-U-E-L-L-E-R. Another thing about Michael Sav, going to Harvard for lacrosse. Really, really good lacrosse player in the junior class. Jaden Murray and now Williams. The junior point guard Darren Williams thwarted on his way down the baseline. This Radner team is quick, Will. It's an impressive team. Ho! Wow. Paris. I've been impressed by Rosenblum's uh, ball handling thus far, as he almost lost it there, but really nice job. Open three. No good, not even close. Kept in somehow, though, by Hickey. And now with 41 seconds left, Radner might put it in their pocket. Rosenblum slipped the screen, now he has it. Danny Rosenblum. Oh. That one might have been taken off the backboard there by Thomas Sorber, in which case it would have been a goal send. 25 seconds left here in the contest. See if we're going to have enough time. We're going to try to go ahead and Stay on this replay before, uh, kind of tough to see. Thomas is inviting the Radner team out to the block party here. Hickey is so strong and quick, just couldn't hit it. And Sorber kept it in bounds. That was a, a really nice move by Hickey, just couldn't quite finish off the, uh, the, the hard work to get that good positioning. That grab is called against number 11 for Radner, Michael Savadov. Ryan Everett checks in for Archbishop Ryan, replacing number three, Rocco Morabito. Williams with three seconds. Everett is open, oh. but he was blocked. Oh. They called the foul. Foul called number 13, Cooper Miller. I don't think he needed to commit that foul. It's actually really surprising he didn't get more ball clean. You know, any coach's rule of thumb is never, ever, ever, and I'm sure Will can attest to it, foul a guy in the three-point line. No it's, the one, it's, it's the one thing that will drive a coach insane. Well, it's a big, big momentum swing here as well. It's punch for punch here in the first quarter. He goes one of the first two, but Ryan Everett looking to add two on in the dying moments. Oh. In and out on the second one, and that'll end the first quarter. Really nice game thus far, though. Ryan and Radner and 
Will, tell me if you think this is fair, kind of feeling each other out early on. Yeah, absolutely. The, the pace of this game has been starkly different than the, the pace of games in the past. Uh, this one, obviously, much more in the half court. Uh, you're not going to see as much of the uh, you know fast tempo transition type game. Um, but without a doubt, it doesn't mean the quality has dropped. You know, just because the, the tempo and the pace might have dropped, quality is still tremendous, and, and I'm just really excited for the, the next three quarters of this one. And the passing's been really impressive to me as well. I mean, early in that first quarter, you kind of got a taste of what Radner was all about. They got the ball into the, the paint twice, I believe, in one possession, and both kick out for three-point shots. Not all of them fell, but there's a... Uh, there's a clear message that Radner's trying to send. It's, we're going to get the best shot. We're going to make as many passes as necessary to make that best shot. And I, I'd like to say to that, it's, it's you know, when you open up the basketball game, it's, it's like a, an old school uh, or rather a, a, a school of boxing, right? You come out, you throw a few punches, you see how your opponent responds, and you continue to, to throw the blows where you see their weaknesses is. And I think, uh, you know, Ryan did that in the first quarter. They, they got an opportunity to see what Radner was all about. And, I think this next quarter will be really exciting. We'll see how uh, Radner responds, and we'll see how Ryan is able to uh, capitalize off of some of the areas that they think uh, Radner is, uh, you know, not as strong in. So exciting second quarter, second quarter ahead of us here. Might have an issue here. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> the board went dead for a while, but now we got it back up and running. 11-9. Archbishop Ryan leads against Radner. Ryan in the white. Radner in the black. It'll be Zaire Paris. To start with the basketball. Moving screen, Jaden Murray. It's been a point of, point of emphasis across basketball for at least the last few years. And again, just that little slide, and that's a good call. Yep. That right foot moved. He wanted to make contact with the screen, which, again, you, know, you don't want to set a screen and make no contact. You know, that's a bad look for you, especially if, if the guy ends up getting guarded and he doesn't get an open shot. But uh, you're better off not making contact than uh, having a moving screen. Here's Jackson Hickey. This is an advantageous matchup for Hickey. Counted and one. Jackson Hickey was matched up against the smaller Ryan Everett and took him to the hoop. Yeah. We said it on the broadcast, and I think Hickey uh, realized it as well. Hickey's a, a really smart player, and he feels Ryan Everett on him. He's probably got 50 pounds and five inches on him and just said, I'm going to take you uh, to the weight room. To the weight room. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one there, Will. Yeah. You just got to watch the kid, Jackson Hickey. He, he's just really smart about where to be on the floor. He knows the spots, gets to them creates a, a, a nightmare for the opposing defense. And that ball was intercepted. Here comes Radner the other way, all the way to the hoop. Extra pass. Hickey, a blocking foul. Sliding to the baseline was Jaden Murray. And Hickey starting to have his way here in the offensive half of the floor. No, Will? No, I, I totally agree. Okay, and, I was going to say, that's the right call. Yeah, no, and, and a lot of times, you know, we, we get on the officials and say, hey, I don't know if that was a block. Hey, hey we never, that was a charge. what are you talking about? Not me. That, that, was a, that was a really nice call by the officials, and the majority of the time, I'll take responsibility for it. Sometimes I get on the <laughs> officials. Uh, but that, that was a really nice call, and the majority of the time, these officials uh, at this high, you know, PIAA level, uh, they really do, do, do a nice job. I, I, I totally, totally agree. It is really difficult to officiate these games. And another offensive rebound here for Radner. Cooper Miller was the one that came up with it. Here's Savadov, he's looking for help. He doesn't want to put this on the floor, does he? He'll have to here. Yeah. He's begging somebody to come to the ball. Thornton, taken away. Looking for Paris and a nice job coming back to the ball. Danny Rosenblum. Rosenblum puts him on skates. Ooh. What a finish. It's an old-fashioned bucket of jelly. <laughs> a little bit of jelly on that one. English, as Bob would say. I, I sure would, but I like yours, too. I like yours better, actually. 
He went right at the body of Sorber there as well. I mean, Everett was clean up top, a lot of body contact down below. Everett kind of got some magic back there and a little bit of redemption. He was the one beat on that first play on the other end of the floor. A really nice back cut, understood time and space on the floor and earns his foul shots. I can tell you one thing about this game. It is not of what we saw last game. That Reading crowd was something else last game. I yeah. mean, my hairs were standing up in my arm with the intensity and, and the chance and, and all of that. So definitely a lot quieter this game. All of a sudden, Ryan Everett, pretty good three-point shooter. One shooter for four in from the line. Exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. Two for five, and it is 15 to 12, Radner. Will, you can speak to this a little bit as a, a current player, and so can you, Nasir, playing in your days. Also, coming back off a huge emotional and physical roller coaster, big game against St. Francis last night. Now you got to come back and do this before 5 o'clock even was first tipped the next day. Is that difficult for a team like Archbishop Bryan? Yeah, it's a trap game. Uh, and you don't look past them, but you're on this high and you say, hey, I just beat St. Francis, a perennial top 25 team in the nation. What's Radner going to do? You can't, and I'm not saying that Ryan has underrated Radner, but it's just, it's it's actually kind of like a natural thing to happen, um, which, which will make this game tough. Well, and because this is a Radner team that wants to go win District 1 this year and has every ability to do so. What a play from behind. That's more of Ito. Euro step and a blocking foul. He will shoot two. And, and going back to your point there, Bob, I think it's always, um, you know, just, uh, you know, as a player, I think it's, uh, it, it's a huge momentum and confidence built. Let's take a look at that there. Zebra got it. Zebra is always correct. Always. And, um, yeah, going back to that point, I think um, as, a, as a player, you, it's a, it builds a lot of confidence to see, you know, to, to get that type of win and upset. But then from a coaching perspective, you never want your guys to ride too high on something like that because you, you got to look at the opponent that's in front of you, not the one that's behind you, right? So I think Coach, um, coach uh, Joe uh, probably informed his guys that yesterday is over and we need to focus on today. So it's, 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 it's what I would say. I want to welcome all the Archbishop Ryan fans that are with us here today. We've gotten to know the program really well over the years, doing games for LaSalle, for LaSalle, rest of the Catholic League, but we also started doing games with Archbishop Ryan last year as they made their tournament run. And we're also excited to announce that we're looking to come to Northeast Philadelphia when St. Vincent St. Mary's comes in on December 29th to oh, broadcast wow. that game. Against Ryan? Against Ryan, a wow. national schedule, Nasir. Joe Zaglinski, a national schedule. Danny Rosenblum pushed off, and Morabito wow. showing himself to be quite the defensive stalwart, Will. Yeah, there's, a, without a doubt, transfer from Shipley, but he played with Ryan this summer. So uh, it's not like a, you know, gen generally, if a transfer comes in, might not uh, be used to playing with your teammates. Not the case for Morabito, as, as, you know, he had this entire summer to kind of work out with Ryan and all. Uh, Five minutes left here. Deep three is no good. Nice rebound by Thomas Sorber there. Who's at last touched by? It'll stay with Archbishop Ryan. 15 to 13, 4.53 to go. We know that we'll be joined by somebody from City of Basketball Love at halftime. It might be the finely dressed guy with the Army sweatshirt next to us here, Joe Santa Laquito, or it might be the owner and founder, Josh Verlin. So stay tuned. And, and when is that game against St. Vincent St. Mary? I'm still on that there. Well, it's, it's December, December 29th. December 29th is the game for St. Vincent St. Mary. That's going to be a heck of a game. A kickball. Hands it right back to Radner here. Henry Pierce to inbound. I like the game from Charlie Thornton. I want him to get a little bit more involved in us here in the offensive half. Right, create his own shot. He's shown the ability to knock it down, did it in one of the early games between him and Jackson Hickey. These guys have a couple of big time scorers. Rosenblum can be one of those guys as well. Creates a great look. Just a bit long off the back iron. Christian Durham just into the game, corralled that rebound. Here is Ryan Everett. Zaire Paris. Contact, a blocking foul. 
And did they count it? They did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And it's definitely a slide there on Thornton. A heck of a finish. And a whistle timeout called by Radner. Sixteen fifteen, four eleven to play here in the second quarter. North Catholic is in the house to our right. They will have the nightcap here against Archbishop Wood this evening. That's a game I'm looking forward to. North Catholic is kind of that don't take a breath offensive style, Will, like we saw with Radner and West Catholic. Certainly a little bit of a different team there than, than those two teams, but a really good club. And I, I think we'll have a different style of play than Archbishop Wood, which makes it a really fun nightcap. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when Bob and I were kind of going over the uh, scouting report for the entire day, we looked at the, the percentage of threes they take. Yeah. And it's something close to 60% of their uh, field goal attempts are three-pointers. Uh, so you'll see high scoring um, from the three-point line. Four minutes left in the second quarter. Rosenblum lost the ball, last touch by Rosenblum. And again, it's Moravito. Tremendous on the defensive floor. Morabito. Good hands. O'Neal. Can he finish it? Oh. Wow. Wow. Between two people. That was an incredible, incredible tape. It is 17-16, Radner. Back and forth we go. Sorber inside. Not much you can do about that. They try to front him. He's just so solid and a really nice delivery inside. Got a special appreciation for the big guys. Sure do. Well, do, your, do your work early and you get the ball and you get rewarded. Yeah, him in particular. One of he my favorite, is. One of my favorite players to watch. Yeah. Hard not to enjoy watching. And he's only a, ju only a junior, right? I, and he's shown the ability to step out, knock down a three-pointer. No, I think as his game conti continues to develop, he'll continue to do more of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm sure a lot of people saw, uh, but if they didn't, against St. Patrick's in their season opener this year. Sorber stepped out and knocked down a buzzer beater winning three. Excellent say, pass inside. Did you say St. Patrick's from Jersey? Yes. Absolutely. They, they have a really good schedule. Yeah, national schedule. That's Nassar. a national schedule. St. Patrick is where Kyrie Irvin played. That was a big time game. That was really one of the first games of significance you know, across the state. It was very early in the schedule and got a lot of people talking about this Archbishop Ryan team. Sorber, how strong is that? Count it, and one. Wow. Fantastic move by Thomas Sorber in the lane. Too big, too strong. That's one there where I'm thinking, hey, don't put the ball on the floor there with that power dribble, but how strong was it in between two defenders? Get the ball to the floor, back up to his hands, of course, get his feet to where he needs to be, and then just throw that one off the glass, big man. Rosenblum. Hickey. Oh, what a, what a spin. Kept the pivot foot the whole way, even through a momentary bobble. We're going to call that one the Princeton spin. <laughs> <laughs> Morabito got himself out of the lane just in time. 
Zaire Paris, pull up, too strong. And O'Neal would be well served to pull that up and get it to Rosenblum. Great look, yes. Nick Monty again. Hey, hey, he did that, no look, no look. He did not, he did not, when he passed that basketball, he was not looking at his teammate. Incredible, incredible pass. Bob, you think you got that pass in your repertoire? Oh, you know I do, Nasir, come on. <laughs> And a grab. Oh, no, an offensive foul called against Thomas Sorber. Bob, I think the correct call here. Take a peek. Here we Monty go. Monty giving him fits and then ward off, ward off. Uh, you know what? It's probably a no call, in my opinion. I don't see a foul there. I thought originally because of that space that Sorber created, maybe a push off, but upon review, I, I think it's probably a no call. Well, the play before, Thomas actually, um, he, he, he silt his, the defender to keep him from, you know, jumping over top of him. And in this play, he kind of allows him to front him. And I think that's where it put the ref the referee in the in a bad position to be able to have to make that call. So I think it's all about the positioning. I think if he continues to position the defender the correct way, you won't see many of those calls come through. That was a really nice call there by the official. A carry, just a, a slight turn of the palm by uh, Henry Pierce. Let me give a shout out to that official. That's actually Benjamin Moore. He is... Um, one of the more premier referees in the greater Philadelphia area in the PIAA. Um, I grew up playing basketball underneath him. Um, know him very well. Know his wife. Know his son. Son actually went to uh, Penn State Abington. And I believe his son is also a LaSalle guy as well. Really, really a uh, renowned referee in the area. 52 seconds left. Morabito. Sorber. Spins away from a double team, lot of contact, but no. They say Hickey was clean with the block. That was a great rim run by Monty as well. Now 33 seconds left. Can Radner put it in their pocket here? Well, not when Hickey gets that look. Whoa. Thomas Sorber says no thank you. One more look. Out comes Monty. I thought we were going to get one more look. My apologies, folks. But Thomas Sorber protecting the rim. And now if you're Radner, I think you almost certainly hold this. You kind of got a second chance there with Sorber's block going out of bounds. You have the three-point lead. Maybe to everybody but yourselves and a few folks in District 1, this is a surprise. See if you can throw a little early dagger here at the end of the first half. Oh. Yes, sir. Rosenblum. 25-20. What a half for yeah. Radner. Is that it for you, Nasir? That will be it for me, folks. Well, um, hey. I've really been enjoying it myself. Had a lot of fun. Um, you will hear my voice again on the airwaves sometime soon. Um, it's been a pleasure working with Will, Bob. Yes, sir. And Bruce over there on the camera. Thank you, my man. It's been a pleasure. Nasir, more to come. Nasir Smith, his debut on Bob Long Sports. Thanks again, my friend. We'll see you real soon. And we'll see everybody else in just a couple minutes here for the second half. Stay with us. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with Franchise, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. Franchise is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, 
then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we will share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above. And the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Welcome back, folks, inside our broadcast booth. Bob Long and Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love, one of our favorite guests to have here on the air. Josh, how you doing, my friend? Another year of hoops. Here we go. Another year of hoops. Another great Diane Moscow Classic. I mean, this event has become one of the can't-miss events, forget regionally, almost nationally. I mean, a I great agree. slate of games every single year for a good cause. And you know, game four, and seen some great ones already today. We sure have, and we're thrilled to be partnering with John and the entire Archbishop Wood family here today. Well, walk us through the first half what we saw. So Archbishop Ryan playing a national schedule this year, acquitting themselves very well, including a win over St. Francis last night. So tough to come back in 24 hours. Yeah, absolutely. And look, this is a big game for Radner, a bigger sure game than it's going to be for Ryan. And not that Ryan isn't playing hard, but this is a proven game for Radner. This is a team that is expected to win the Central League, is going to commit, uh, is going to compete for a district championship, is going to compete in that state championship bracket. And they need games like this and tests like this to, to prove to themselves how good they can be. And so right. far, uh, they're, they're stepping up to the task. Jackson Hickey, a lot of fun to watch on the offensive end. And what I really like about Jackson is he's matched up against, inside against Thomas Sorber, and he knows that some of the layups that he can typically get in other games are not going to be there for him today. Yep. So what I love is he's getting into the middle, he's playing off two feet, and then he's finding other guys, whether that's you know Henry Pierce for a layup, Nick Monty's come in for a couple buckets, Danny Rosenblum's played well, but yeah. I think Jackson understands that this isn't going to be a game where he can score 30, but it's a game where he can have the impact of scoring 30 by finding other guys and breaking down the Ryan defense. Absolutely agree. Let's talk a little bit about the wider Philadelphia landscape and about City of Basketball Love and your role in it. You guys do an excellent job covering everything from high school all the way up through Division I. Thank but you. What, what's catching your eye? And tell us a little bit about what's new. Oh, my goodness. Well, a lot's new. Uh, we've had Andrew Robinson as a full-time employee for the first time this season. We've, so we've been covering a lot more basketball than before. Good, Six writers good, here today. Good get, by the way. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but just, you know, onwards and upwards. I'm out of grad school, so i uh, come back to be covering basketball full-time now. It's our 11th season, which is incredibly awesome. hard to believe. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, what I love about what we do, um, there's a lot of things I love about what we do, but every year there are new teams, different teams that are having, you know, the best year that they've ever had or, or a year that they haven't seen in 50 years. This year, Radner is one of those teams, and yeah. I think that's one of the, what I love so much about it is there's teams like a Radner, you know, like a Devin Prep last year. Uh, you can go back through the years and find teams every year that are doing things that have, have never happened in school history or haven't happened in decades and decades, and I think that's just sort of the most enjoyable part about it. Yeah, that's great. So in terms of what's next then for, for you guys here, this is obviously just three, four weeks into the season, but... We're, you're going to carry this through all the way into late March and then even, even April if, say, uh, a big five school makes a run, which is looking less and less, <laughs> less likely, likely by year. the day. But uh, tell We've me had a couple of them, so, you know. That's exactly right. But what does that look like? I mean, how do you guys get to the finish line in such a long marathon season? You know, I mean, I think the good thing is is that the basketball season is only so long, right? So it's, it's November to March, you know, like you said, maybe a little bit into April. But really, March is when it starts yep. to, to, to ease up. But this is our full-time job. I mean, this is what we do. If I didn't love covering basketball all the time, I would be in the wrong profession. Sure. So, um, no, it, you know, having Owen and being able to, you know, give each other a night off once a week just to recharge the batteries a little bit is super crucial. But this is my 46th game of the season right here, 47, wow. 48. I'm sorry. 
yeah, 46 of the season. I'll get to 160 by the uh, by the end of March, beginning of April. So it's just about you know just just getting out there, you know, just seeing yeah. as many d different teams as possible. We cover the girls' side now too, so I've gotten to see you know 50 or 60 different teams so far early in the season, and how many more can I see <laughs> over the next eight to ten weeks? That's really great. No, it really is. It's a great thing. So. If you had to have a takeaway about Philadelphia basketball here this year, like how is this year different than, than last? Is there, you know, obviously there's a lot of the same faces, but what what's the identity of the 2022-2023 season at this point? I think it's still to be determined, you know? I think when you say, like, what's different about this year from yeah. last, it's, it's, it's which teams are, you know, is it sure. the Radner versus somebody else, right? Um, I think we're still too early in the year to really know. We're expecting the Catholic League to be as competitive as it's ever yeah. been. Uh, we we're expecting that maybe this isn't the year that, or this is the year that West Town finally gets beat in the Friends League. George sure. School has been playing really good basketball as of late, uh, or this, I should say this entire season. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, as you mentioned, we're only really three weeks in, right. not even into the high school season. And it, all right, yeah, we're, you know, game five, game six, we're starting to get into the meat of it, but there's still so much basketball to be played. And then the postseason. So right. I, I think it's a little premature to know, but right. that's the best thing about covering basketball in this area is there's going to be good hoops, there's going to be great games, there's going to be great teams, great players, and we just get the privilege of going out and getting to see it. Just a couple minutes till we get started here in the second half, so I'll leave the floor open to you. Anything that the folks should know about you, about COBL, I'll leave that, that floor to you. Well, thanks, uh, Bob. Uh, you know, City of Basketball Love, this is our 11th season of operation. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, so we are funded by the people that we cover and the teams and the players and the fans. So if you've been on the site at all the last few weeks or months, we really appreciate any donations. You can We have a donate page under our About section, so please check us out. Feel free to you know sign up to our Patreon uh, on PayPal, send us a check. All that is what keeps us going. So we really need the community support to get behind us. But the last thing, I just really want to give a shout-out to my incredible staff. I mean, you had Zach on the last game. Yep. He's a freshman at Syracuse. It's great to have him back in the fold as he's home over winter break. But whether that's Andrew Robinson or Owen McHugh or Joe Santaliquido is here covering the game for us today. or There's just so many writers that have been chipping in and contributing to what we do. And I, I really feel like I never thank them enough. And so if any of them are watching, thank you guys so much. The, our staff makes us as special as we are. Well, thank you. Thanks for taking time with us. Of course, Bob. And thanks for doing what you do and showcasing high school athletes. Thank you. I appreciate we have, it. We have a kindred spirit in that And thanks for doing regard. what you do. You do an amazing job as well, and I don't give you enough flowers when I'm <laughs> on here because this is what you do is fantastic, and I watch your streams all the time. Well, we read your stuff as well, so the respect is mutual. Appreciate it. Of course. And enjoy that second half. It'll be fun. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest? no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest. Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at GOLA Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. GOLA gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design, relocation planning and budgeting, helping you manage your vendors, construction oversight, all with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value, value that flows. Welcome back, folks. Just getting started here in the third quarter on Bob Long Sports. Bob Long, Will Ryan, and Bruce Badgley. And there's a moving screen. Going to be called against number 13, Cooper Miller. And everybody's been talking about this game, about how we've been able to take our breath with a little bit of half-court offense by both of these teams in the first half. Sorber, again that back screen, and that one's taken off his hands by Thornton. He gets it back and finishes. Thomas Sorber. 
Big moment here for Archbishop Ryan. Certainly I would say the favorite in this game, but Radner, like we've talked about, and like Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love, talked about at halftime. Their best team in a long, long time. Team with postseason dreams and the personnel to do it. Hickey, a little short, snatched out of the air by Thomas Sorber. Here's Zaire Paris. Zaire Paris, no good. And Hickey brought it down. And what a job to just feel Zaire Paris on his hip. I love the way that this Radner team swings the ball. I mean, the, the first look is to pass, not to put the ball on the deck. I love it. Thornton to the hoop. Couldn't finish, and Sorber now really starting to flex those muscles here in the second half. Yeah, well, half-court offense, just a, an interesting concept here. <laughs> Morabito. And nice defense on the ball again by Miller. Morabito guarded by Miller. Oh, the, the pivot foot, the ability to keep it, but just couldn't finish. And O'Neal pulls this one back, 6.03 to go, third quarter. Radner not in any hurry, but when Hickey gets the ball, Are he you can do things me? like that. Jackson Hickey, what a move. Keeps that pivot foot, it was the left one. Just great presence of mind. By the way, Archbishop Ryan fans may disagree as to whether he kept that pivot foot. It was, it was close. But a heck of a move nonetheless by Jackson Hickey. 5.29 to go, third quarter. Sorber runs through a defender, no call. Rosenblum. Hickey. Hickey all the way, count it, and one. Jaden Murray picks up the foul. The Radnor Raptors, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of District 1, putting a little shockwave into Warminster's Archbishop Woods crowd this evening. Tell you what, split the defense beautifully to get to the basket. I like how they're looking to go to the basket first before uh, pitching off to another player on the team. Hickey now only one for three from the line, though. Kids playing too good. I got to find something that needs to work on. <laughs> Morabito, that's a really tough shot and ill advised. And now here comes Hickey, and Sorber's behind the play, and he's hurt. Morabito fouls Jackson Hickey, and Thomas Sorber is down on the baseline on the opposite side of the floor. That you don't like to see. Grasping at one of the ankles and slapping the floor in pain. We'll take a quick break here, folks. Attendants are looking, and the trainers looking at Thomas Sorber. 4.53 to go, third quarter. Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with Franchise, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. Franchise is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We We're back here, folks, and Thomas Sorber being attended to on the Archbishop Ryan bench. We'll keep an eye and we'll see if he'll make his way back out onto the floor or not. Big loss for Archbishop Ryan, and honestly, goes well beyond tonight, Will. It's more about the long-term health. This is a non-league game, and just one of about 20 plus, you know, that they'll play in the regular season. You hope that Sorber can get healthy real soon. 
Hickey, jump stop, so strong, but could not quite finish. Darren Williams, good defense in the lane. So we talked about how last year Jaden Murray played a lot of the backup five minutes, even though Sorber did play most of the minutes. You know, when Sorber was in foul trouble or whatnot, it would be Murray playing the five. Murray back in that kind of five position now. Thornton got the steal. Thornton will get it right back. Got it. It's a 10 point lead and it's the largest lead of the night for Radner. That's a beautiful pump fake there to get the man in the air and drained it. Yeah. Do you think he felt any pressure whatsoever there with that one dribble sidestep looking, I mean, so co cool, calm, and collected. Really, really nice job there by Charlie Thornton. You know, I don't think good shooters feel that kind of pressure. No. They, they, have, they have taken that shot in the gym so many times that it's just natural, and you could see it there. Just beautiful, in rhythm, up, and good. The Radner Raptors, coached by James Chadwin. Will, you called it that this was one of the games that you were looking forward to the most. And Radner making a statement here tonight, deservedly so. A lot of talent on the floor. Really like Thornton's game. Hickey has been arguably the most dominant player for Radner to this point here today. But a really solid starting five. Yeah, this has been my first time I've been able to see Radner live in person. Uh, last year, I tried to go to their game against Lower Marion. It was a home game for Radner, and uh, by the time I got there, it was sold out. <laughs> so that, that kind of goes to show uh, the following of this Radner team and how uh, their community has kind of embraced them and been like, wow, you know, we, it's nice to have a really good basketball team. Um, we're going to support them with all we've got. So uh, I'm lucky that this is my first time I've been able to see them. I was excited to see them. I kind of had picked this as, as my game that I, I really wanted to see, my game of the day, and uh, Radner's lived up to that. 4.09 to play here in the third quarter and another hand on it. Michael Savadov, your boy from Stone Harbor, right? <laughs> Is that correct? You are correct, yes. So tell me about this rec league in Stone Harbor. It's actually pretty good. I mean, we've got, there's three guys on rosters today that play in the rec league. So I, three guys that play, you know, pretty high level basketball. That's, that's what I'll say about it. Love it. Pull up, Williams, no. And really, none of those have gone this afternoon for Archbishop Ryan. Love the way, love their spacing on offense. Thornton comes to the jump stop. O'Neal giving the three and elects to just pull this out. Time is their friend. Again, still three and a half minutes to go. In this third quarter, Thomas Sorber takes it off the hands. Uh, oh, he, Henry Pierce. He sure rules that lane, doesn't he? And great to see him back in the game. Thornton, yes, counted and won. Thornton came to the basketball. Ryan caught sleeping. I think that was... Kind of quick for the officials to get that back in play. As you said, I think Radner wasn't ready. Or excuse me, uh, Ryan wasn't ready. Christian Durham picked up the personal foul. It is now the largest lead of the night for Radner. <laughs> 35-22. And Bob, this last game, when it was Reading versus uh, West Catholic, we said the disappointment was we won't be able to get to see this matchup again. This is two 5A teams now. So uh, as good as this matchup is, we could see it again later on in the state playoffs. Sorber, they double him hard in the corner. It's good first and foremost to see Sorber back into the basketball game. Zaire Paris, great look, Everett. Williams stayed in bounds but gave it away. Rosenblum waits for numbers, now has them. Savadov. That one hit the rim, and Savadev would be best served to just pull this back and start the offense again. This great discipline there, working for the high percentage shot.
They want the ball to Hickey. And a hand check called against Michael Zaire Paris. 2.22 to play third quarter. Thornton. Bruce, what I just noticed on that inbounds play is it's not that they so so much put the ball into play quickly. It's as soon as the inbounder gets the ball, they throw it to the open man. Yeah, absolutely. Rosenblum. Thornton, he's been good. Gives it up. Pierce, yes. Just beautiful offensive work there. You said, Bob, he gave it up. And what did it happen? A layup. Beautiful. Sorber inside, taking off his hands. The Radner faithful getting loud here. And it's Archbishop Ryan that goes one and done. Looking for a cutting, Savadov. Savadov too strong, and Sorber brings it down. And the foul is called against Pierce. 94 feet from the basket. One minute and 28 seconds to play in the third quarter. And you've got to commend what Radner has done on Thomas Sorber today. I mean, every time he gets a touch, they're doubling. Uh, plane of verticality has been great. I mean, he's just been losing the ball going up. Uh, honestly, they haven't been fouls. He's not been getting fouled much. He's gone to the line maybe once. And uh, I think that's probably good officiating so far. Big time finish by Michael Zaire Paris. And that's what it's taken for Archbishop Ryan to score here this evening. Radner is making it really difficult. Got to be an off-balance spinner off the glass to find a way to score. And Radner will take that. And Radner will also take the last shot here, up 13. Why, why give well, uh, Ryan if, another possession? If you can get it, or Pierce. Wow, great move to the basket. Clearly, I don't think Ryan was expecting him to go to the basket. Yeah. As he said, I think they... Figured they were going to go for the last shot. Yeah. Uh, well, Henry Pierce just kind of ended up with the ball. It wasn't a pass to get him there. The lane opened up. He says, sure. Everett, they run the back screen for him. That's well short. Hickey brings it down. Numbers. Thornton. Yes, sir. Light the lamp. Twelve seconds left. Largest lead for Radner. And this place momentum. is loud. Four Ryan seconds needs left. a good shot here. Everett puts it up. He's hammered. And that's going to come before the red light. So he will shoot two at the line. As bad as that is, it's not the worst thing in the world for Radner, right? Radner, Everett so far 0 for 2 from 3, missed badly on the last one, and 2 for 5 from the line. So it's probably the guy that you don't mind going to the line. And you can see the impatience with Ryan, okay? They're, because Radner is working on offense, they're possessing the ball, they're working for the high percentage shot. Every time Ryan gets it down in the half court, they're kind of rushing their offense. Yeah, and when you look at what, what's going on for Ryan right now, Thomas Sorber, eight points. I mean, we've seen him put up 24, 29, 27 a lot, so testament to this uh, Radner team and uh, then uh, Michael Paris he's got 11 he's actually having a nice game beyond those two no one has more than three that should be the end of the quarter yeah, right right I they mean, didn't start the clock guys come on <laughs> let's head to the fourth quarter you say what do you think yeah he made the first missed the second it was a two shot foul Radner touched it let's go to the fourth quarter Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make the uh, I'm going to make the executive decision. We're headed to the fourth quarter, <laughs> and we'll take a quick break. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. 
We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. All right, guys. Well, Bob's executive order was not passed. And Will's going to go down and see what he can hear. In the meantime, we'll just surmise. I don't understand. Was there a lane violation or something? Now Everett's going to take a second free throw. Missed that one as well. And all's well that ends well. Yeah. I, I don't understand. Will, maybe you have something for us. I, I have nothing for you, Bob. <laughs> In my life, I don't know if I've seen anything quite like that. He made a free throw. He missed a free throw. It was a two-shot foul. Radner certainly didn't go into the lane early. Why would you go into the lane early? They didn't even didn't have anyone to box out. Oh, wow. I guess it doesn't really matter. If you, if you really think matter. about it too much, you'll start Actually, losing big brain cells. Hang on, hang on. They just adjusted the score on the big board. The big board now says 41-24. We have it as 41-25 because of the first free throw that Everett made. So did they wave off the first free throw? Will's going to go see. Well, yeah, I'm going to go down to the scores table and check on this. All right. See what we can find. His wow. name is Anthony, by the way, the public address announcer. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen, that they took off. Like, after another free throw was shot, that they waved off the point. There were two other free throws that were shot before they adjusted the clock, or before they adjusted the scoreboard. Will's getting a, an explanation from Anthony, who does a great job on the public address. Quite honestly, the way things go is that one point really isn't going to matter because Radner is just... Well, it could matter, but well, what do you have? So the score is 24 to 41. They did call some type of violation on that first free throw. He, the best that uh, Anthony could give us was, he said the best explanation they got was there was some type of violation on that first free throw. So they did wave that one off, and uh, he missed the second. Wow. So he is now officially two for seven from the line. Yeah, not, not a good day thus wow. far for uh, Ryan Everett. Okay. 41-24. Sorber was fronted, and they had defenders behind him. Good defense by Radner. Thornton. Yeah, look how they got the floor space. They're going to play this for the rest, rest of this fourth quarter. Very deliberate. Yeah, I mean, Savadov, what, what's the urgency, right? And what was in bloom? He'll get all the way to the lane and he'll take that one. Uncontested at the rim. Largest lead of the night for Radner. It's 43-24. This is the Archbishop Bryant team that beat St. Francis last night. And maybe, and maybe that's the reason why, Bob. Okay. I mean, many times, you know, we, we come into these games and teams. Emotionally, just don't have anything left in the tank. Sure. Especially, you know, after a, you know, a big game the night before, coming back, playing, uh, you know, another game, and when they're so focused on beating an opponent, you achieve that goal, boy, it's really difficult to muster that type of emotion to come back the next day. And I'd say that has a lot to do with it. You can see it looks like you're just a step slow everywhere on the court. Full timeout. This is the Diane Mosco Foundation shootout here at Archbishop Wood High School. Up next, Father Judge against Central York. Bruce Badgley will take his spot back. <laughs> I'll do some camera for you guys. Take my loan break. <laughs> loan? Since you were on camera the first game. That's true. That's true. You guys did a great job with that one. Yes, we did this all day, and we'll continue to do it with just a four-man crew. And then the final will be North Catholic against Archbishop Wood. Thornton will pull this one back out. 
I think Rosenblum will wanted to go for the lob there, didn't he? Uh, I, I think he did, but well served by Thornton. Wow, there's definitely missed contact there in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. I'll say. Zaire Paris got away with one there. Can Archbishop Ryan find a way back into this one? That one is blocked. Bob, I'm, I'm going to say that Morabito's got to shoot that corner three there. Right? You're down 17. Uh, he hasn't really shot the ball much. It's, it's been a lot of Zaire Paris today. And if you have a catch and shoot opportunity and you have the shooting ability of Morabito, I think you got to shoot it. Savadov. He's able to reconcile and restart the offense. Now Pierce in trouble. Timeout before the ball came loose, says the official on the near side of the floor. But, but to your point there, Will, uh, yeah, I think that going into the fourth quarter here, they've got to take any you know high, per, high percentage shot or open look, especially from three, um, that they can get. But still, you know, Radner... There's a lot of fouls to give here. I mean, there's going to be a minute, minute and a half burned off the clock just to get to the bonus. And that's when you feel so grateful to have a point guard like Danny Rosenblum and a guy like Jackson Hickey who can handle the ball. And funny enough, early in the game when Michael Savadov caught the ball, it looked like he you know, would, would sell the ball, would pay money for someone to take it off of him. Now he's, he's no, handling the ball nicely at the end. I agree with you, Will. Absolutely. He's provided another nice ball handling option out there for the Raptors. He certainly worked his way into the flow of the game very well. Well, the Radner offense has just really worked itself into the flow of this game. Yeah. They're, all those guys are oh. dialed into high percentage with the exception of that pass. Yeah, well, that's a high percentage look for Michael Paris. Just a giveaway there. Savadov, Thornton, and two quick and really unnecessary turnovers. That's one way to get a team back into a game. Murray. Darren Williams. Williams spins, gets to that left hand, and he's fouled. He'll shoot two at the line. But and here right. come the Raiders. But you're right, Bob. I mean, this is a team that, you know, giving them those types of opportunities emotionally gets them back in this contest. Sorber comes to the scorer's table. Trainer right alongside him. That is Williams' first points of the game I have him down for. So at Ryan Everett will take a seat for the time being as Thomas Sorber comes in in his place. 13-point game, 5.42 to go. There still is time, but the urgency has to be now. Archbishop Bryan, they've gotten a couple turnovers. Hickey goes behind his back. Great look. Pierce looking for help. What a find. Rosenblum needed to be there, too. Good move there. Rosenblum back cut is Thornton. Last touch by Thornton. Last touch by Thornton, and Radner can't believe it. Boy, that's three empty possessions in a row now. And three turnovers in a row. Wow. I, I, I don't know, though. I think that's yeah. last touch by Ryan. Sorber wants the ball. Gets it. Strong. Strong to the basket. And now Ryan goes back to the full court. Hickey just pulled away from him. Paris. Up and under. Murray pulls it down. It's loose, and now Thornton has it. That's got to be a carry, and it is. Now, this is what Archbishop Ryan wants here, Bruce. We talked about that in the last game, Redding and West Catholic, and who yeah. plays what type of style. A technical foul has just been called against James Chadwin. So now Darren Williams to the line can cut it to single digits here, and Ryan will get the ball. Talk about a turnaround in a game. Holy cow. One more for Williams at the line. 
Chance to get it under double digits. Lots of time left. Oh, oh how oh. does that one not fall? It was halfway down and popped out. 10 point game though. And the pace is now where the Raiders of Archbishop Bryan want it. Full court pressure on Radner has clearly provided some issues. Offensive foul as Mortobito runs through Hickey. Morbido's got to shoot the three. I mean, Hickey's got length on him. Morbito, while a capable driver, I, I don't think that's an advantageous matchup for him to take Hickey to the rim. And he had an uncontested three off the Sorber dribble handoff. So it'll be a 10 point lead. It'll remain 4.45 to play fourth quarter. This is Bob Long Sports. We're thrilled to be here. We love Philadelphia high school basketball. And this is one of the events we love to come to every year. Thornton, he's gonna go right at Sorber and That's Sorber took it off his hands. And it's gonna be Ryan basketball. And wait a second. Wait a second, here we go. So he got <laughs> overturned on the play. Yeah, this is where I think, I mean, Coach has got to call, call a timeout. I mean, he needs to get his guys on board with the fact that they need to start working some clock here. And again, nearly stolen. Pierce now has it now. And Miller. this is who you want the ball in the hands of, in my opinion. Rosenblum nearly traveled. Hickey. Pull it to the logo. No, bad pass. Here's Williams. Excellent finish, eight point game. Again, just the way the doctor ordered for Archbishop Ryan. Speed up Radner, make them uncomfortable, turn the ball over, get an easy bucket. Do they have five or six more of those in them in the next four minutes? That's the question. Sorber, and a foul is called. It should go against Williams, and indeed it does. All right. Well, Radner will be in the bonus next. Foul. And this is the Archbishop Ryan pressure that, that we expected. And this is the level of intensity that we expect from a Joe Zaglinski-led team. Just didn't really show up for the first couple of quarters. Yeah, and a game last night, Yep. It, uh, it literally, we, took, we th it literally took three quarters for them to get into their, you know, normal, uh, normal playing style. They came out flat. There's no doubt about it. Radner didn't. Radner had came out with something to prove, right? They're, they're a really respectable District 1 uh, 5A program, but they want more respect, right? So they came out and said, hey, we're going to punch Ryan in the mouth. And Ryan really just let it happen, right? We t we've used the boxing analogy earlier in, in the day. Ryan was just taking jabs. Um, and now, finally, they start to jab back. Oh, Fortunate my. there for it to come to Thornton. He really got away with the pass there. Yeah. Wait, that's just how they drew it up, no? <laughs> <laughs> that's right, assist to Hickey, right, Will? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Pull up three, it's good. Darren Williams. Good pass, gotta hit Thornton, yep. What Radner has done a nice job, when they hit the sidelines, they look middle right away on this press break. They've, they've had trouble with it, but they've done some, some things right. Hickey, fortunate that ball got to Thornton. Hickey inside, contact, count it, and one. And that's how you break the zone. See the contact from behind. Williams picks up the personal foul. Tell you what, give Radner a lot of credit. They're sticking with the game plan. They're staying disciplined. Right, those three turnovers here in the fourth quarter could have ballooned to five or six turnovers, right? And maybe a little luck early. Oh, nice defensive possession there. That was Miller and Savadov kind of teaming up. But now Ryan gets it right back. Sorber is fouled by Jackson Hickey. Sixth team foul against Radner.
Hickey was thinking about taking a charge, and Sorber just jump stopped right before him. Yep. So he was like, ah, now I have to play defense, and his arm got caught in, uh, caught with Sorber's arm. Well, and that's excellent body control by the big as well. Good from the foul line also. Under three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. This game is crawling along now with all the stoppages. Showing no ill effects of that uh, injury he suffered yeah. uh, earlier in the game, which is good news. Well, and how good is that to see? Because he saw the agony that he was in there on the floor, and you just worry, particularly with bigs on things like that. Now with the made free throw, chance to set up the full court press. Nice catch, snatched out of the air by Thornton. All the way to the hoop, nice uh, finish. That, that, that textbook in beating the press and then getting to the basket for the layup. All right, maybe I'm an old guy, Will. The too small thing, I'm over it. But I don't think that's the situation where you throw that out, is it? No. Where you fly no, by somebody? That would be more of a, uh, a post-up type play. Timeout was called by Joe Zaglinski before Morabito spun and finished. 2.29 to play. No, there, there, that, was, that was not when you say he's too small. Yeah. Also, Sorber is not. No. No. And he didn't really finish on Thomas Sorber either. He yeah. just kind of drove by him. But nevertheless, it, hey, was, a, it was a nice finish. Listen, it's a big bucket of the game. Everybody's <laughs> excited. I'm excited. He's excited. We're all excited. Just felt the need. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's bad when I start feeling yeah. I'm too old for stuff. No, but Bruce, maybe, you, you maybe you play it, to your strengths in terms of uh, I just had a nice bucket and I'm not a good trash talker. Ah, so, so, so I'll just say, uh, you, know, you never know. You never know. <laughs> hey, all love up here from the booth, by the way. We're just having a good time. Six games in a row that will, we're liable to say anything. Yeah, but. well, as we found out, but, uh, you know. <laughs> No idea what you're talking about, Bruce, okay. but we'll just move on. All right, move on. That's right. We still have two more games. That's right. Darren Williams, he's hit a three. Couldn't hit that one. And Thornton with a big rebound. And I don't know how that's How not a is foul. that not a foul? I, I don't understand. <laughs> wow. Oh, my. Archbishop Bryan basketball, 2.14 to go. That, I don't, wow. I don't know. I don't know. When, when you go back and look at the film, and, and I'm sure refs go back and look at film sometimes. You know, they, they care about their, uh, sure. their performance just as much as everyone else does. When they go back and look at the film, I mean, if they were a player, that's something that the coach would scream at. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Paris all the way, and he is fouled. Yes, we got one official saying out of bounds. We got another official saying a foul. The foul will win out, and it'll go against Michael Savadov. 2.08 to go. Well, everybody in the bonus now, so. Oh. Paris was having a really, really nice game. Is, is having a really nice game. One missed free throw doesn't overshadow a nice game, but 13 points uh, thus far today. Rebound by oh Murray, my. much needed. Someone's got a flash to the middle. Thomas Sorber's Sorber. got a flash to the middle there. Well, he had strong enough hands yeah. and took the foul, and he will shoot the front end of the one and one. Yeah, lucky though. I mean. If I'm Murray, I'm like yelling at my teammates, like, help me out. I'm getting doubled. No one wants to flash to the middle. Yeah. People just went, were running away yeah. from him. Yeah, well, a nice job by Murray to go get that offensive rebound, too, off that missed free throw. Boy. Missed. Murray got another hand on it, but couldn't corral that one. Savadov up the floor. Here's Jackson Hickey. Yes, sir. Well, you'll have to take our word for it. Williams, no. And they're forcing it now. Final minute 38. Radner well on their way. Hickey, 
And he got clocked across the face by Jaden Murray. And, and the, the refs would be well served to come together and yep. maybe think about a flagrant there. Because uh, look at this slap down. I'm not saying that he didn't get some ball, but that was after he took off a piece of his nose. Yeah, the one, thing, the one thing I want to do is just make sure that they keep in control of this game as we wind it down here. Yeah, you want to promote player safety. And I'm not saying that, I just think a conversation would have been good there. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that it has to be a flagrant, but I, I think just a conversation shows that they want to promote player safety. Here's Jackson Hickey. What a game for him. Missed the front end. And a small hope here left for Archbishop Ryan. Jaden Murray trying to finish, and he's fouled. Found by Miller. He did not want to be on a poster later this evening. It's a really nice contest by Miller. Yeah, I was going to say credit to him for, you know, some people shy away from that. Some people duck down. He went up and said, I'm going to make you earn it at the line. And that just kind of goes to show th this Radner team has not been affected at all by the I guess the, the grandeur that is, you know, Archbishop Ryan basketball. They, they've got a name. They're a, a really respectable program. And Ryan or, and Radner came in and said, okay, well, we'll show you that we're a really respectable program too. We're not going to be scared of you guys at all. And yeah. played their style. Yeah. Right, Bruce? Yeah, light bulb just didn't come on for Ryan until it was too late. And, and free throws have been a, yeah, a, I'm a, a massive real issue. issue. I mean, there's a, there's I, I, a what, ton of things that you can look at here, but. At least double digit. You know, at least 10 missed free throws, if not more. Yes. Savadov and Hickey. And will Archbishop Ryan foul or not? Well, I think you always have to early rather than late. I mean, you need time on the clock for no, possession. I think the question is, Bruce, will they foul at all? Oh. Yeah. 12-point game. They might just let this clock run out. Oh, Hickey wow. Hickey is fouled. Couldn't finish. That's, that's a grab of the wrist. I know where you're going, Will. I'm with you. I mean, that's another. That was a dangerous, dangerous foul. Watch this. Thomas Rober comes in, and I guess if it was a complete hug, if he had gotten the other shoulder, maybe yep. maybe more of a, a conversation. But Hey, look, they're big boys out there. I mean, they, you know, they're taking the they are. Everybody's taking their licks. I mean, everybody's taking their licks. Everybody's playing hard all the way to the buzzer. I'm with you, Bruce. It's got nothing on that first game or the, the last game, beg your pardon, Reading and West Catholic. And again, on my unofficial count, Hickey up to 20 points on the day. 21 now. 54 to 40. It's been a physical battle. And like I said, I think, I think emotionally it just took Ryan too long to get into the flow of this game. Uh-oh, and now Thornton doesn't like it. He's being pushed back. Thornton, so Paris and Miller got tagged up. Thornton stepped over Paris. He didn't take too kindly to it. And they're still sending Thornton away. I think they'd be best served. And here he comes. Yep, they're going to send somebody to the scorer's table, and that'll be it for Thornton. What a game for him. But yeah, no reason uh, at that point to keep him on the floor. You kind of felt this coming, right? You know, Archbishop Bryan has a lot of pride. Radner has a lot of pride. The way this game has gone, very physical, particularly here in the fourth quarter. Hickey is fouled. And yeah, the tempers start to flare a little bit. Hey, that's just being a competitor. Right. Nobody likes you. to lose. Now, there's a way that you can lose and keep your composure at the same time, and that's really the responsibility of the coach. Yep. As this game's kind of winding down, Jackson Hickey is ad, as advertised, if not better. I mean, he, he's really awesome to watch. And, and Charlie Thornton as well. Charlie yeah. Thornton not getting the Division I looks that Hickey got, but Thornton is 
every PSAC coach should be looking at a guy like Charlie Thornton at minimum, PSAC at minimum. Hickey fouled again, 26 seconds left. The Radner faithful likes it. What a nice crowd here this evening. Tell you what, I mean, it's jam-packed in here right now. There's no seats and fans ringing the court. Wholesale substitutions for Archbishop Ryan, a team that has beaten Patrick School, St. Francis. Radner goes toe to toe and beats them soundly. Jackson Hickey now, how about that reception? You can see what this means to him well. Yeah. Now that kid's special. Really, really enjoyable to watch. Wow, that was, <laughs> I don't know if we caught that on the screen, but number 13 on Archbishop Ryan <laughs> set a nasty moving screen. Final 10 seconds. <laughs> District one, Radner makes a statement here at the Diane Mosco Foundation shootout. A 15 point win over Archbishop Ryan, who's been the darling of December here in Philadelphia. Radner, what a performance. I'm gonna go grab Jackson Hickey if I can. Okay. Now, Will, I tell you what, I just really enjoyed w watching Radner play. You know, old school, yeah. Great half court offense, I really liked it. Being able to, uh, you know, kind of weather the storm there in, in the second half from Archbishop Ryan, I thought was fantastic. Yeah, and, and furthermore, Bruce, the fact that about that second half, the first half was very much uh, Radner's tempo, right? In that fourth quarter, it turned into a little bit more of Ryan's tempo, and Radner said, okay, we can play that game too. We can handle the ball. Uh, just a really, really nice job by Radner. Well, I thought they were played, they played smart about it, you know? They remained uh, true to who they were. and Hey, so they're going to do a quick post-game huddle, and then he's going to come right back and do the interview. Okay. Uh, Will and I will take it till he, he comes out here, Bob. But I'll tell you what, uh, just a, a really special win, I think, for Radner. I mean, a win like this can set a team off for an entire year. What do you think? Without a doubt. And last year, I mean, they made it very far. District won a 5A championship, Jackson lost a, a close one. Here. And we're actually doing a live stream here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Jackson Hickey, big time, 22 and 10. How did that feel out there? That was awesome. Uh, it was team effort for sure. They got me the ball, got me places I needed the ball. Um, worked hard, it started with defense. I mean, it's a team sport. Uh, it was just so much fun to be out there. Proved to everyone that we belong in this court, and it's only up from here. Who are these guys right this here? My little brother, and this is my little sister, Calvin and Lucy. Wow, your brother had quite the game here today. That was a lot of fun. So going up against Archbishop Bryan, we called him, hey, the darlings of December, right? I mean, they had these big, big wins over national powers, and now here comes Radner. You guys are one of the teams that everybody's looking out for in, in District 1 this year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we had a good year last year, couldn't capitalize on some big games. We're coming back this year. We think we can win any any game against any opponent anywhere. And I mean, yeah, we, we just brought it today. We're going to bring it every time. We're going to outwork the other team, and it paid off. Well, Jackson, I really appreciate your time. We'll let you spend some time with family here. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate the exposure and everything. Absolutely. Pleasure to meet you, Jackson. And we'll send it back to you guys. What an interview. What a young man. All right, Bob, great job. i tell you what, just uh, I. I think the fans at home could get a little bit of a flavor here about how chaotic it gets <laughs> in between games where we've got fans from uh, heading out. We've got new fans coming in. Um, yeah, we basically just shake it all out and start all over again here in another half hour, Will. Yeah, there's no doubt. We'll be back in probably about 17 minutes time for Central York and Father Judge, another awesome matchup between two in-state programs. Really excited to see this one. 